Morning to you viewers, this is the Colonel speaking to you live from the Grange for British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting. Now, we're back, we're still with the Columbia Graphophone Records, educational series, passages of standard prose, number four, lecture 62, Addison, spoken by Walter Rippman, M.A. Here we go. In our return home, we met with a very odd accident, which I cannot forbear relating, because it shows how desirous all who know Sir Roger are of giving him marks of their esteem. When we were arrived upon the verge of his estate, we stopped at a little inn to rest ourselves and our horses. The man of the house had, it seems, been formerly a servant in the Knight's family, and, to do honour to his old master, had some time since, unknown to Sir Roger, put him up in a signpost before the door, so that the Knight's head had hung out upon the road about a week before he himself knew anything of the matter. As soon as Sir Roger was acquainted with it, Finding that the servant's indiscretion proceeded wholly from affection and goodwill, he only told him that he had made him too high a compliment. And when the fellow seemed to think that could hardly be, added with a more decisive look that it was too great an honour for any man under a duke, but told him at the same time that it might be altered with a very few touches, and that he himself would be at the charge of it. Accordingly, they got a painter, by the knight's direction, to add a pair of whiskers to the face, and by a little aggravation of the features, to change it into the Saracen's head. I should not have known this story, had not the innkeeper, upon Sir Roger's alighting, told him in my hearing that his honour's head was brought back last night with the alterations that he had ordered to be made in it. Upon this, my friend, with his usual cheerfulness, related the particulars above mentioned and ordered the head to be brought into the room. I could not forbear discovering greater expressions of mirth than ordinary upon the appearance of this monstrous face under which, notwithstanding it was made to frown and stare in a most extraordinary manner, I could still discover a distant resemblance of my old friend. Sir Roger, upon seeing me laugh, desired me to tell him truly if I thought it possible for people to know him in that disguise. I at first kept my usual silence. But upon the knight conjuring me to tell him whether it was not still more like himself than a Saracen, I composed my countenance in the best manner I could and replied that much might be said on both sides. Well, there we are, viewers. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and goodbye.